Welcome to this free immigration help channel. In this video, I'm going to show you one very, very important skill that I think every immigrant needs to have is how to navigate USCIS.gov website, which is the official government website for, for US citizenship and immigration services. Now, I myself as an immigrant most certainly do wish that I knew a little bit more about the, uh, the website because it is the main source of the information that's where you can find all of the forms, all of the applications, petitions, waivers, all the information, the fees, how to file, where to file, some of the applications are available online, how to check the case status, how to check the processing times, and if the processing times takes a little bit longer, who to ask for help all right so without further ado let's get into it as you guys can see i have uscis.gov open in front of me i'll put the main links in the description below now in this video obviously we're not going to go through all the unnecessary stuff i mean most of the stuff you can find use but i will i will in this video i'll show you the most important things uh like where to find the forms how to check the case status and just basic navigation. So as you can see, I have the homepage open in front of me and you can do right from the homepage, you can find a lot of stuff already. So as you can see on the homepage, you can find the uh, information about the uh, offices, your local offices, which can be very, very helpful in case if, for example, your application gets delayed or gets past the processing times, that's where you most likely going to be seeking for help and and for the information and for the update on your application further down we have some of the forms that are available to file online and i'm going to actually show you this page because there are quite a few of them and uh, as you can see some of the important ones is for example the application to replace permanent resident card which is the green card if you need to update it yes you can file it online obviously the change of address file it online freedom of information most likely you're not going to use it but just in case you can file it online as well one of the most popular um, questions in general forms is the i-130 is the petition for alien relative if you're a permanent resident in the united states of america or if you're a citizen of the u.s you can file that petition for certain relatives like spouses children um, in some cases parents and you can do that online as well online request to be a supporter financial support that's as you can see mostly applicable for the current programs that are available for ukrainian citizens uh cuban haitian again all this information is right there i-539 application to extend change non-immigrant status so yes some of the things are also applicable for non-immigrants but most of the stuff is going to be of course uh, for the immigrants because after all this is the immigration services website uh, there's an application for asylum and withholding of removal which is surprisingly now you can file online before you had to mail whole bunch of just a huge package of documents and you had to do a few copies of that i believe it was three copies total that you had to mail so pretty big package now it is available online which is a huge time saver if you know obviously you have an option you can you can file the application online or you can still file it by mail it's still your preference and a lot of people you know I, I get comments all the time hey I, I'm not good with the computer I'm not good with the internet is it okay if I file it by mail absolutely you can still definitely do it fill it out you know print it out fill it out by hand and then, and then file it but the problem with filing it by mail is that obviously you know you're you're spending time time money on on mailing the stuff you know before it gets there let's assume it takes about you know three to five business days before it gets to the PO box or the address that you're sending your application to then it takes time for this application to be picked up from that PO box then it gets you know delivered to the immigration officer who's going to be reviewing the application then it gets reviewed if there's something wrong they're sending it back because a lot of times with paper paper applications when you fill it out there's much higher chance with a paper application to make a you know some some kind of mistake miss something compared to filling it out online it's sent back now you have to change it send it back 
you get the point. You're losing a lot of time, all right, compared to filing it online. So if you have, if there is a chance for you to file it online, if it's available, I highly, highly recommend filing it online. Uh, as you can see, another very important one, N-400, application for naturalization, also available online. And uh, yeah, that's, so make sure before you're doing something, make sure that it is available online. But let's get back to the uh, main page again. Some of the most accessed forms, you can find them here again. You can manage your case from the home page. You can check your, your status, check your processing time, change your address online. And obviously there are some news and, and uh, stuff for non-immigrant stuff for um, you know employers, for example, who are sponsoring the immigrants. But we will not concentrate on that in this video. We will concentrate more on the purposes of immigrating to the United States of America. So one of the most important pages on this website is not even the home page. It is the forms. And uh, I'll show you how to navigate this page. Basically, when you click on the forms, a few things will come up. Again, file online, filing guidance, filing fees. But the main one is all forms. Now, before starting your immigration case, before you know going further, with whatever whatever immigration whether you are already in the process of immigrating right or you're just thinking about starting the case you need to know obviously which petition which application which form that you need to file and this is the page that you will refer to because this page right here as you can see is pretty long it lists and it's it's uh 107 different forms it lists all of the forms that are available and these are the forms that you will use to move on further in the process or start some kind of new immigration proceedings all right so for example let's say you know uh, we're gonna take the example of let's do the asylum right you can file it online now so you can find it either through homepage or you can find it through here which is going to be the form uh, let's see if we can uh, locate it here application to change exchange application there it is it is i589 application for asylum and for withholding of removal so let's say you're in the united states already obviously because that's what you that's where you need to be in order to qualify for um, you know one of the requirements to file for the asylum as you can see, yes, it is available to file online. So you found it here, application for asylum and for withdrawal of removal. One of the things that you can do to make it much easier if you don't want to scroll through everything, if you don't know the form number, is obviously just type up whatever you're looking for, asylum, and there you go. The very first thing, obviously, there's a for, for a relative, but we're not going to concentrate on it. So you found the form. Now what? If you click on it, the main page for that application for that petition opens up where you can find everything you need to know about it and that's why it is so important to be able to navigate uscs.gov because whether you are doing it all by yourself the whole process or whether you have the attorney immigration attorney or immigration uh, some kind of consultant whatever whoever it is is helping you to do this process you still need to be able to find the information to verify it from the official government source, which is USAS.gov. So obviously here you're able to file online, but before even filing online, here is where you can find forms and documents download. This is, you know, here you can see there's only two, right? There's the form itself. So before even, even filing the form online, you can open this PDF and have this application in front of you in front of you go through it see what kind of information is required maybe you're missing something maybe you don't have something maybe you need to get it so before you even start the online application go through this form right then open this form instructions for that form and go read through the instructions now the instructions there is instructions PDF for every single application for every single petition that is available there so without even relying on the help from the attorney or a consultant immigration practitioner or even this youtube channel right <laughs> you can find all of the official information directly from 
the instructions all right everything is in the instructions where to file how to file how to fill it out how much it is everything you need to know and one important thing that I wanted to point out here why it is so important to do that for example let's say you are watching uh, one of the videos on this channel and this video has been recorded in 2020 right yeah. let's say it's the instructions on how to file you know your asylum application in fact I do have a video how to fill out your asylum application in that I've done in like 2019 or 2020 well as you can see here this is updated on January 31st 2023 now actually never mind this is this is the expires <laughs> this is updated on October 12th 2022 October 12th 2022 that's just a few months ago so these forms these instructions they are always being updated so something might change something that I've mentioned in the video three years ago might be completely different thing now so it's very important to even if you got all of the information and it seems straightforward it seems clear to go ahead and verify it yourself on from the official source so you got the instructions you got the application right so this is in the forms and documents download in each single one and it doesn't have to be specifically for the asylum let's say we are doing you know permanent resident card I think it might be application to replace perm rest card there you go let's say you're replacing your green card it's expiring and you need to update it here you go the same thing there's check naturalization eligibility already they want you to get naturalized which is great there's an option to file online which is also great again forms and documents download here you go you got the form itself a PDF you got the instructions and then you have some kind of application petition acceptance whatever in certain situations again in the instructions you will be able to find out what this is and if you do need it again there's an addition date here 2017 kind of old on this one they didn't update it but I guess it's very straightforward it's the same there is a section where to file again every single petition every single application it will have the section if you are able to file it by mail here it's available online some of the forms are not available online so there you will have to file by mail there's addresses one separate for USPS which is the PO box which is the one I always recommend and there's an option for the carriers right the uh, couriers so the FedEx UPS DHL whatever I do recommend sticking with US Postal Service though just my personal recommendation I never had problems with them whenever it comes to the immigration there's also the filing fee again very very important also updates pretty much constantly uh, probably like every year there's an update to a filing fee it changes usually gets more expensive some of the forms are free some of the forms you have to pay here you can find this information uh, in the instructions you will be able to find if you qualify for an exemption if there is in general an exemption for a certain form uh, there is a checklist of required initial evidence again can be very very helpful you will find that as well in the instructions but if if you're in a rush and you're just gonna go briefly this is it this is the listed uh, checklist of everything that is needed for a certain application filing tips special instructions and related links if there is something else that is needed again every single application every single petition whatever it is you can find this separate page from all forms whichever one you click on whatever it is something something new petition for alien fiance I never clicked on this one never been in this one I don't think I've been in this one uh, but as you can see form instructions where to file filing fee checklist everything is right there everything is available but let's go back to the uh, home page because I wanted to show you in this video a few more tools so that you kind of have a better just just a little bit more um, information now you will see there's also newsroom tab which you will find all the news some changes if you want to stay up to date in the immigration world there you go you can you can find it here citizenship and green card in those tabs obviously if you're a green card you know if you're a resident or if you're applying for residency 
you know, green card will be applicable to you. Citizenship, if you're applying for citizenship or if you're already a citizen and you want to submit the petition, basically everything related to citizenship will be in citizenship. Everything related to green card will be in green card. But if you are able to navigate the forms and know the forms and get into each forms yourself, you're not even gonna need any of these. Obviously laws will have all the new laws that came out pertaining to the immigration. But another very, very important um, tab that I wanted to show you in this video, tools. So we're gonna click on that and we're gonna go into the tools. And here you will find a few very, very important things that you will have to stay kind of up to date. First one obviously will be the case status. Now the case status is the page where you are able to, yes, check the case status. Uh, you, you will have the receipt number once you start your immigration process whatever it is you're doing let's say you're applying for your employment authorization document um, for the very first time right uh, once your application is accepted you will be sent you will be mailed a uh, receipt you know, from the immigration services from the usas and that receipt will have the receipt number what you can do with a receipt number is you can enter it here in this field where it says enter the receipt number right here click the check status and it will tell you in which stage your case is if it was approved if there is additional documentation that is required if your card is being printed if the card was mailed to you and sometimes it gives you even the tracking number in order to track your physical card whatever it is whether it's employment authorization document or a green card or really whatever it is so very very convenient uh, but also on this same page, on the case status check, uh, it's accessible through other um, ways on this website, but I, I, I'm kind of used to this one and usually it is helpful to find it here because the first thing you do is you go, you check the status of your case and let's say it's still pending and you think that it's, you know, it's taking a little bit too long, something, something isn't right. Here, you can come down and you can find out what are the standard USAS processing times for these cases. So we're gonna click on it and we're gonna open this in the new tab. Uh, actually, it didn't open, so I'll just click on this visit page. There we go. And uh, here I'll show you how to locate basic, you know, um, information on your uh, case and how long it usually takes. So here, as you can see, the first thing you see is the forms. And that's, again, it shows you why it is so important to know exactly what kind of application you have, to know exactly what kind of form that you are filling out. Why? Because by that form, you will be able to do that. So let's say you have uh, filed your, um, applied for your employment authorization document. Employment authorization document is, uh, if I remember correctly, I-765. There you go. I-765, application for employment authorization. So we're gonna click on that. That's what we apply from. Form category. Now, as you can see here, again, if you are avail um, if you are able to fill it out yourself, to go through the instructions, you know exactly which category based on you are applying. So let's say in our case, we are applying based on pending asylum. You applied for your, your asylum, you're waiting, it's past six months, now you're applying for employment authorization. So in this case, it's going to be C8, and there are two options for C8 based on the pending asylum application. There's an initial application, and there's also renewal replacement. So let's just do initial application here. And also the next option, two offices. Again, if you did it all, not, not, not even yourself, but more so that you stayed on top of your case. You've been digging in through the information, you've been reading the instruction, you know where it was filed, you know where it was submitted, where it's being processed, you're gonna know which service center it is being processed at. So we're gonna select the Texas, just for the purposes of example, because if uh, I'm, I'm in Florida, if you're filing it from Florida, you're gonna be um, processed in the Texas service center. In this case, in just I-765, for uh, it, some other form might be processed somewhere else. But if you click on get processing times, let's see, processing time for application for employment authorization, Texas Service Center, 80% uh, of cases are completed within C-notes, okay? 
well, something new. <laughs> Let's see the notes. If you have applied for an initial employment authorization document based on a pending asylum case, you may be eligible to have your EAD process within 30 days. If, if we have not yet made a decision on your case after it has been pending for 25 days, you may submit an inquiry to get an additional information. So there you go. You got your answer. Within 30 days, if within 25 days nothing is happening, you can submit the case inquiry. And that brings us back to the the case status online and this is it here it is submit the inquiry option we're going to visit that page and uh, as you can see there you go case inquiry what happened case outside normal processing time did not receive notice by mail did not receive card by mail did not receive document by mail appointment accommodations typographic error all right obviously in our example that we're doing in this video is case outside normal processing time we're going to click on that and uh It'll give you some instructions, what's going on. Most of the times it just says, hey, you know, we are processing stuff, it happens, it's delayed, whatever. We're gonna go through that. Form number, again, in our example, it's I-765. Form subtype, again, it's going to be the C-8, to where is it, there you go. Initial, receipt number that I was talking about, date file, name, birthday, Alien registration number, again, you're definitely gonna have that. Mailing address, last action taken on the case. So last action taken on the case here is going to be basically, uh, if you check your case status on online, it will tell you in which uh, stage it is. So for example, your application is still being reviewed, right? If that's what it says online, just copy that and paste it here. Email address, filed by, that's it, submit, you're done right and uh also you can do here the change of address and find the uss office locations just in case you are you know you, you you submit that case inquiry and you really don't get any kind of answer reasonable at least answer back so i'm gonna keep this video you know at this so it's already 20 minutes but as you can see on this website just you know this official uss um that gov website us citizenship and immigration services you can literally stay as control as much as possible of your case be on top of your case know exactly the forms um, know where to file know how much it is how much it costs to file how to check the status how to inquire if there is a problem or there is a delay update the address basically do everything that is necessary and again i highly recommend i mean i mean one of the reasons one of the main reasons why i started this channel uh, is because i've made that mistake myself in the beginning starting my immigration process i have completely trusted my case my own immigration case into the hands of other people other people that thought that they knew better and other people that were immigration attorneys because they just, you know, just because it, it's an immigration attorney, it really doesn't mean anything, right? It's your case and you have to be responsible for it and you have to stay on top of it. If you do, you're not guaranteed success, obviously, but the chances for success are much higher. So I really hope this uh, video was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Uh, every week, every, uh, every every once in a while, I make videos going through all of the questions in the comments and just answering them one by one. And hopefully soon on this on this channel, I will be able to start doing live videos where people can uh, log in, tune in to the live video and ask questions in the real time and, and and me answering them again i'm not an immigration attorney i'm not an immigration practitioner um, all of the information that i provide in this video is directly from the official source usas.gov which is available for everyone uh, hopefully this was helpful thank you for watching and uh, i'll see you in the next video